Good morning, New Beginnings Church of Life family. We're so glad that you're here. Now, let's prepare our hearts, minds, and bodies to worship Jesus together. The Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you.
But if you remember last week, uh, we started on the third way to press in. And we as Christians need to learn how to press in, don't we? We can't just give up when times get tough. We'll always be given up. Spiritually, there's always things that are going to come our way, and it can be very easy to give up. So the third way we started talking about last week, about pressing in, and that was by what? Putting on the what? Armor. The whole armor of God. We started talking about that, and we actually began to speak on the first piece, which was the helmet of salvation. But before we specifically spoke on how to place on the helmet, I expressed why we needed to put on the helmet of salvation, didn't I? We talked how Satan mars and scars the image of God, the image God creates us all in found in Psalm 139. How many know that God creates us in a very good image? Psalm 139 says what? He fearfully He fearfully and he wonderfully made us. He remarkably and wonderfully made us. Uh, we were considered his marvelous works. Isn't that a great thing? Yeah. Turn to somebody and tell them, I'm marvelous. Kirk, not you. I want to kill you. <laughs> Turn to somebody and tell them, hey, I'm a marvelous work of God. And you are. And you are. But you know what? The devil has come to you many times in your lifetime, even from very young on, and tried to tell you there's not, nothing marvelous about you. Has he? Sure he has. Sure he has. He's told all of us that. So we are considered his marvelous works. We're also skillfully wrought by him. God skillfully brought us together. And you remember when I talked about how when the Lord had us in his mind, he held our father's sperm in one hand and our mother's egg in the other, and then he joined them together with just the right chromosomes. He skillfully wrought you. And you came out perfect as he wanted. You were no mistake. And you're certainly not junk. Amen? Amen. And how many times has the devil told you you've been a mistake? Yeah. And that when you were put together, you were put together wrong. It's a lie, isn't it? And then last of all, we talked how numerous and precious are his <coughs> thoughts towards us. You know, God has nothing but good, many and good thoughts towards you in your lives. Amen? Isn't that good? Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. What a wonderful image to be born in. But how by words and actions by those significant others that the devil brings in our lives at times that come our way, that begin to mar that image that God created us in. And we see ourselves so much below how God sees us. Isn't that so? And we get wounded by these lies and actions by others, and then we believe these lies, and we actually defend them. We build strongholds around these lies because we have heard them so much by the enemy we don't like them, we don't want them, but because we believe them, we defend them and say, they must be true about me. And sometimes it takes years to break down that stronghold, to finally convince us and, combine, combine, uh, and to finally convince you that what you were believing is a lie. Turn this down just a tiny bit, tiny bit. Amen? So we get wounded by these lies and actions. And this is why we need the helmet of salvation so we not only combat these lies and see these strongholds torn down. You want a good book on that? Get the Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers. She talks all about that. You got strongholds you're dealing with right now? 
And you want to go a little further with that? Go get her book. Because some of you need to tear down those strongholds down and you've had it from childhood on. And it's hindered you. Because that's what Satan wants to do is to mar and scar that image that God created you in. So you'll never reach your full potential that God has destined you to reach. You got to know it. Especially when you become a Christian because then you become a direct threat to his kingdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Yeah. So get that book if you need it. Now I said before last week that the book of Ephesians was more than just an encouraging letter that Paul wrote to them, to the Christians there. But actually the book that he wrote was a spiritual warfare book that explained in more detail what each piece of the armor does for us. And that's where we find the armor of God. We find it in the book of what? Ephesians. Chapter 6. Wow. You guys are right on it. I'm impressed. Praise God. That's right. But did you know that the rest of the book correlates with those pieces of armor and describes why, how important they are and why we need to wear that armor in our lives if we're going to press in and overcome. Why do we press in so we can overcome? How many know that we are called to be overcomers? Isn't that true? Yeah. Not down and unders. Mm -hmm. And many Christians live down and under instead of being overcomers. They let the least little wind. You know, they, they say that the winds out there today, they're going to blow up to 65 miles per hour. And I wonder how many Christians today, not even in this church, but the churches all over, have stayed home because we were afraid of being blown down. <laughs> By that 65 mile per hour wind that might gust every once in a while. Not even all the time. Amen? We can't be blown down by every little wind that comes our way, but we have to press in to overcome. Praise God. So as we know, Satan tries to steal our identity and who God created us to be from times when we are even at a very early age. You know why he does that at a very early age? Because that's when we are most vulnerable and impacted. Because little kids believe what they're told, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yes. And so if Satan can come even at a young age, even at us, he knows we're vulnerable. And if he hits us hard enough by significant others of what they do and say to us, it's going to impact us with a lie and we're going to believe it growing up. And it's going to hold us back from something God has wanted us to become. Isn't that true? It's true. Proof of this is why so many people are always trying to be better. They're always trying to better themselves in some way. Isn't it so? They got to give themselves facelifts and belly tucks and implants and nose jobs and toupees. <laughs> I know I don't need one. <laughs> My wife would chase me out of the house if I had one. <laughs> but they're always trying to better themselves. When they look in the mirror, they see something. Oh! Because somehow they just feel that they were put together wrong. God made a mistake somewhere. They didn't do something. But when we accept Christ and place on that helmet of salvation, 
our identity begins to get restored as we come to know Christ in a greater and greater way. He begins to reveal the truth to us of who, what, not only of what he thinks of us, but the lies that we have believed. And we are set free of many of those bondages and chains. Amen? Amen. And that's why we need to put on the helmet of salvation. In Ephesians 1, 1 through 23, Ephesians 1, 1 through 23 basically coordinates with the helmet of salvation. If you want to know what the helmet of salvation does for you, read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 23. And I'm just going to go in a few verses today to show you how it works. And then you're going to read the rest yeah. later on. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as you know, the helmet of salvation is designed to combat the lies of Satan, especially the ones that destroy the self-image that God birthed us with. We are fearfully, we are remarkably and wonderfully may tell somebody, I am remarkable. I am remarkable. I am wonderfully made. Tell them that today. Do you believe it? Can you tell me you believe it? Yes. <laughs> Pastor Jim, I'm trying to believe it. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1, and we're going to read the 6 today, and I'm going to read from the NLT, New Living Translation. And it starts like this. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. How many can say, I am a faithful follower of Christ Jesus? You're here in church today, so you sh <laughs> Yeah, you can call yourself a faithful follower, follower of Jesus, Christ Jesus, right? Yeah. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I do at home all the rest of the week. Well, that's between you and your God. Right? <laughs> He'll help you get it right. <laughs> now, going on. Verse 2, it says, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. And then going to verse 3, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, and other translations translation say heavenly places, has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places and realms because we are united with Christ. Tell somebody, I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. Tell somebody that. I have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You have. You have. You've been blessed. And going out of verse 4, even before he made the world, God loved us. My gosh, he loved you even before he made the world. You existed in his mind even before the world was made. Can you believe that? Can you believe the generations that have come before us that every one of them was in the mind of God before he created the world? What a God we serve. You can't fathom that, can you? No. Sorry. Some of us can hardly think of two things. <laughs> no less generations of millions of people and all their significance. Think about that. But he loved us every one of us, and thought about us even before the creation of this world. Wow. That's powerful. 
How he loved us and he chose us in Christ. Going on to verse 4. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through, through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him little pleasure. Great pleasure. Gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we do thank you for your powerful, magnificent presence in this worship service, Lord, that we had with you. We ask now, God, that you would open your word up to our ears and eyes and our hearts and to help us to hear what the Spirit says, Lord, and help us to see and understand why we need to put on, Lord, the whole armor of God and specifically right now the helmet of salvation. Bless the word today. Let nothing hinder it, I ask. In the name of Jesus. And let it be something that is so powerful touches our hearts today. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, if we look at verse 4, it states that even before the world was made, God loved us and chose us. And then going on in verse 5, it says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. Now, when we look at the lens that God went through to bring us into his family. The one thing that becomes clear is we are not nobodies. How many times has the devil tried to tell you you're a nobody? He has, hasn't he? But look at the lengths that God went through. Think about this for one minute, minute that the Father, Father God let His Son Jesus come to the earth knowing the death that He was going to suffer and also He having to place on Him the sins of the world. Do you think that was easy for Him as a Father to do that to His Son? Or think about Christ when He came knowing the type of death that he would have to suffer in order to make the great sacrifice so we could be redeemed. The great torture he went through. These are the great lengths that God went through in order for us to be brought into his family. The God of this universe involved himself totally in winning us to be his own. So when the devil tells you that you are nobody, you just have to read these scriptures and see that that's a lie. If we were nobodies, the Lord would have never went to the lengths that he did to bring us back to him. And the devil tells you that tells you you're a nobody, Satan. You're a lie, Satan. Mm -hmm. Get thee behind me. Because I know I'm a somebody in Christ Jesus. Because my God went to every length needed so I could be brought back to him. Amen? Amen. In Ephesians 1, 1 through 6, we see that God had us on his mind, like I just told you about, even before creation. It's the same thought we get out of Psalm 139, where David said, He knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb. He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And he knew when, exactly when you were going to be formed. He planned to bless us and was determined to adopt us 
as his children. So understand our identities are children of the Most High, and so there is no way we are nobodies and mistakes. Amen? Amen. If he knew about you before the creation of this world, there is no way that you are a nobody and you are a mistake. The devil will tell you that. But all you have to do is read these scriptures and you know it's a lie. And it comes with the helmet of salvation. Because remember, we need a mind change. We need a perception change. And we need to stop thinking like the world thinks. We need to start thinking like God thinks about us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, in Ephesians 1, 3, it states this, that the Lord has blessed us in heavenly realms or heavenly places. In Ephesians 1.3, I'll read it to you again. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, every, not some, not just a few, but every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms or places. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Then in Ephesians 6.12, it says this, and all of us know this, for we are not fighting or wrestling against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen? Amen. So we see according to Ephesians 6.12 that from these heavenly realms or places, Forces of evil launch their attacks. Because that's where our wrestling matches come from. <laughs> Yet, as we just read in Ephesians 1.3, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing from those realms and places so we are guarded and protected. How many know that you are guarded and protected today? Our wrestling matches may come from those realms, but God has also blessed us from those realms with every spiritual blessing. And we don't have to fear how the devil attacks us. Because we have every spiritual blessing available to us. Do we understand that? Yes. <clears throat> You do. No weapon formed against you shall what? Prosper. That's why. We have value and we are important to him. And because of our relationship with Christ, there is not a single spiritual blessing we don't have. We have it all. You're not lacking. God has already given it to you. You're not lacking. And because of that relationship, there's not a single blessing we don't have. So Satan's lie is also, there is no use for you trying. There's no use to, for you to try to achieve anything. You may as well give up before you start. How many have heard that lie before? Give up before you get out of the start gate. Yet, we have every spiritual blessing resource to do great things in this life. Do you believe that God has given you every spiritual blessing? Do you believe it? Yes. The Word says it. Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. So you have every spiritual blessing at your resource to do great things in this life. So not only does he guard and protect us, 
because we have worth to him and because we have all those spiritual blessings and because we have all those spiritual blessings we don't have to give up because we have all we need to accomplish great things for him amen, amen. tell somebody I have all I need from God to accomplish great things. You do? Amen. You have every spiritual blessing available to you, but we don't realize it. We think we're paupers in the spirit. The devil tries to tell you we're paupers. We have nothing. And God says, I've given you everything. It's available to you. It's yours. Sorry. Amen? Another lie that Satan throws at us. No one could ever love us. How many have ever heard that one? I'm unlovable. Who would ever want to love me? We've all gone through that. Yes. For this reason or that reason or whatever reason. Right. Yet we find in Ephesians 1 4 this. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Once again, another lie of Satan debunked by the Word of God. God loved us and chose us even before he made the foundations of the world. For God so loved the what? The world. That he gave? Yeah. It's a lie of the devil. When he tries to hit you with that, that how could anyone ever love me? And it's in that same scripture that tells us we will be holy and without fault. Again, another Satan's lie is we'll never amount to anything. And God's truth is we will reflect God's holiness throughout eternity as we become more and more like our Creator. And that is far from never amounting to anything. Just by reflecting God's holiness in this world, we have become more than an unsafe genius who can give us the greatest inventions. You realize that? Because his inventions, that genius and all the inventions he could give the world does nothing for God. But as you become more and more like Christ and reflect his holiness, it brings glory to him. Such a difference. Another lie of Satan. You'll never become anything. I'm worthless. It's a lie. And this is all in Ephesians. Verses, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. And you need to put on the helmet of salvation to change your perception and who you are. In Christ. Amen. Amen. That's what we need to do. And then Satan's lie. Again. We are nothing. And God's truth is. We have been adopted as the children of God. Which means. That old ties. The old ties. Of where we have come from. Are broken. And all the resources of the head of the new family. Become ours. It's what action happens in adoptions. Can you really call the sons and daughters of the ruler of the universe, can you really call them nothings? Really? No. You're adopted in and you're children of the Most High. You're children of the ruler of the universe. Mm -hmm. Can you really call the sons and daughters? Nothing. No, we are somethings in him. Amen? 
We're not only somebodies in him, but we're somethings in him. But the devil would try to make us feel like we're nothing. And we see that in Ephesians 1, 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You know, these are but a few verses that we can see that what the Lord has done for us in this chapter of Ephesians. Read the rest for yourselves. Start studying it. Look what the Lord has done for you and what it means to your life, what it means to your identity. Continue to understand what he's done for you and given you and who you are in Christ. And your identity will soon, soon, as you keep reading that word, keep reading the truth, your identity will soon begin to get restored. Why do you think the devil doesn't want you to read the Bible? He doesn't want you to find out who you are in him. That's right, that's for sure. He wants you to continue to believe all the lies about yourself. Yeah. And he's told you many times when we were just young, youngins. And he marred and scarred that image that he created us in. Fearfully and wonderfully made. His marvelous works. Wrought skillfully. With many and numerous and many precious thoughts from him towards our lives. He don't want you to believe anything different. Reminds me of the news media today. The majority of them, they want you to believe lies. The prophets of Baal. Believe the lies. Because then you'll never believe the truth. Or never, you'll never have faith enough to believe the truth. I'm not believing the lies. I'm believing what God's word is saying to me. Amen. I'm listening to what the prophets have been saying. That's right. That's what I'm believing. I'm not believing the prophets of Baal. Amen. Amen. Be encouraged. Don't do it either. And as you put on the helmet of salvation, you will discover who you are in Christ and what he has done for you as children and as his child. This is how we begin to combat the lies of Satan. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to go to nbcol-ny.com to connect with us. Or you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. Leave a comment, subscribe, and follow us. We would love to hear from you. There are two ways you can partner with us and give. You can go old school by making out your check and mailing it to New Beginnings Church of Life, 202 East Commercial Street, East Rochester, New York, 14445. Or you can go new school and give online at nbcol-ny.com.